Our guest today knows more about Cuban volleyball than you can ever imagine. He created the Facebook group Los Leones del Volleyball Cubano, the Alliance of Cuban Volleyball, where you can find plenty of content devoted to the great moments in the volleyball history of Cuba. He gave us an insight into the processes in the Cuban state, which allowed players to play abroad, what is the Cuban secret of producing that much volleyball talent, and many, many more. Ladies and gentlemen, Ronald Suri. Ronald, welcome yes. to First Tempo. Thank you for being our guest. And in first place, I would like to thank you actually for providing us with the opportunity to watch some of the matches during the season in Italian League. And to thank also Onasko, Atanaska Rachanski from the Bulgarian Facebook group, fans of the Italian Volleyball Championship, who contributed largely for your participation today in the podcast. You know very much about Cuban volleyball, so I am not sure where to start from, but since when have you been watching volleyball? When did you create the Facebook group and why did you do it? It is very popular now. It is a very popular group with almost 10,000 members, including some famous names in the world of volleyball. Well, uh, first of all, thank you very much for you having me here. And thanks to my buddy in ASCO. He always shows uh, love and support to the Cuban volleyball community. And through sharing my, my, my post and the games that I put with so much effort, and well, uh, to your question, I think I became a volleyball fan when I was uh, five or six years old. My father told me one day, uh, come, I need you to watch me to play volleyball. And I thought he, he will play volleyball with some friends. But instead, he took me to the one, uh, one of the best, uh, one of the first very uh, matches that uh, we we saw in the in the World League, so I was impressed with all those players, and I think it was at that moment that I realized this is my favorite sport. So yes, uh, and the second question I create with a friend this group, like uh, ten years ago, during the World Championship in Italy, uh, I was very active during the let's say not golden era, but it was a good uh, period for us. We conquered silver medal at World Championship and then bronze at World League in Sofia in Bulgaria. So yes, then come uh, bad times, if you, pres if you prefer to say so. Uh, I decided to step back uh, from this group and it wasn't till 2017 when our under 21 team uh, won the silver medal at the world championship that I decided to come back. So yeah, that's the history behind Los Leones of uh, Del Volleyball Cubano or the Lions of Cuban Volleyball. We all know that many players fled from Cuba in order to play abroad in the last 15 or even more years. Juan Torrena, Leao, Leon, Simon, and others. For several years, they are actually allowed to do that, the players in Cuba. What was the reason for the liberalization? And what made actually the Cuban authorities to take that decision? And actually, are there any requirements on granting a player to play abroad now? You know that uh, we know that you have Estrada and uh, Sosa in Italy, right? Yes. Yes, well, uh, first of all, it's interesting how things have changed and still need to change more in order to say that we are equal to other countries of the world. But answering your question, the Cuban sport authorities, which is an extension of our communist government, allowed the athletes to sign with pro institution since 2013 or 2014, with uh, the first of all of them was... Uh, Javier Jimenez, who signed with uh, Pauk and then Cepeda and so on. 
So they took that decision as a countermeasure because many of the of our top baseball players, which is our national sport, as you know, were escaping, but wasn't a thing for, uh, from because of the volleyball players because in Cuba comes first baseball and then everything else. I am not uh, an Asian or a liar, but I can tell you that some of the requirements are that the player cannot ha have an Asian behind their signature or at least not in an official manner. So let's say uh, someone uh, get you a contract, but he cannot be present in the ne negotiation with the Federation. So it's almost like they always uh, find a way to help the players without getting too much involved. So yes, um, the second part is that the Cuba Federation took 10% of the contract of the player. So let's say if your contract is about 15K, 50K, uh, you will only see uh, 45. So the player doesn't see that 10% in the end of the contract. So that's uh, one of the many reasons we are still having troubles to maintain the players to play for national team. And uh, something similar uh, happened in 98 when the Cuban government uh, opened, let's say open, to our national team members at that time when we won World League, they were allowed to participate in the Italian uh, League for two years. After that, in 2000, the Cuban government decided that it was time to stop. And I remember that Iosbani Hernandez, one of the captain of that team, told me, we receive only 20% of the contract and the rest goes to Cuba. And that was something criminal at that time, but with, uh, with these uh, new years, with these new policies, I think we will start to keep the players more time in national team instead of losing it at the age of uh, 21, 22 years. I believe yeah. that it was very similar in Bulgaria before 1980, 89. With, mm -hmm. with, I don't know what the percentage was from the salary of the players that was going to the Bulgarian government then, but, uh, but it was very similar. And in, uh, in what extent is actually, for example, Estrada free to choose the, the team he's going to play in, for example, in this case, Modena. So is Estrada choosing Modena and, of course, Modena choosing Estrada or the Cuban Federation is choosing the team where a player is going to? to well, for, first of all, Estrada is not uh, in the current federation system. He, he has some troubles when he was uh, younger with other players and he was expelled from the national team. So he found an agent by his own means. And I believe he was uh, the person who first put it in Brazil, then two years in Minas. And then uh, uh, Gianni, I believe, uh, saw him and became inst interested. Of course, that uh, hasn't to do anything with Cuban Federation. Mm. So he's free to sign who whatever agent or whatever team he wants. And yes, that's the Estrada, the Estrada case, which is a, who, sorry, who is a very interesting player for the future. But I believe that he will, I, I don't know, I am assuming that he, wa he wants to become Italian instead of pursuing a national team career uh, for Cuba. That's, that's, my, that's my thought because, uh, Let's, let's uh, develop it more and I will keep telling you things. Yeah. Don't want to share too much right now because there are some other answers. So, question, sorry. Yeah. Uh, yes, um, you mentioned that Estrada very probably is going to play for Italy. So now we have Juan Torrena who plays for Italy. We have Leal for Brazil, Leon for Poland, but Roberlandi Simon stayed loyal to Cuba and now he's back in the national team. You know him, why do you think that he took this decision and the others didn't? 
Well, first of all, I think uh, the reason that he is playing with us is because no other team in the world received uh, uh, received him at at the at that time. If you can remember, Bulgaria was interesting too, yeah. uh, but uh, I don't know what happened with uh, Lazarov and Ganev, who doesn't doesn't talk that he will be able to help uh, Bulgaria to qualify to Tokyo, and they 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 were right because they were so late, and it was useless to try to nationalize a, a man like Simon. Then he before that he tried to nationalize uh, for the for the Canadian team or Argentina team, but they stopped the process, saying that he, he wasn't required. So yeah, uh, I think that. The decision that made Cuba take him back was uh, when they realized that they lose Leon, Juan Torena, and Leal. You cannot uh, produce so many stars like like those and and uh, see other teams uh, took it from your hands. And they see the opportunity that Simon was looking for. And I think that was uh, many of the reasons that we have Simon back in the national team. It wasn't so easy because, the, as you know, Cuba asks 10% of the contract to the players, but uh, Simon makes some adjustments with, with them and negotiate hard. And I think they have uh, more to win than lose with Simon on the team. Unfortunately, we didn't get to the main objective that was uh, qualifying to the Tokyo Olympics, but... I think the, with the time, you will see the results of Simon coming back to the team. I have no doubt that he can be a uh, good has, uh, hel uh, source help to those uh, young players uh, in the national team right now. Do you think that there will be other players who will come back to play for Cuba like, like him? Well... I don't know if you know a player called uh, Michael Sanchez. Uh, yeah. He played for national team uh, from 2007. No, actually 2006 to 2009. Uh, he played several matches uh, versus Bulgaria and World Leagues and etc. Play abroad with Lokomotiv Novosibirsk on Arkas Izmir for say shows uh, one or two clubs. Uh, in Korea also, but he got injured uh, after, uh, before the Korean season. So because of that, he wasn't able to play at the Olympic qualification tournament in Canada. And who knows what will happen if uh, Sanchez uh, play that, that day for Cuba. And I don't like to make assumptions uh, or or rumors or anything like that. But I think there are other uh, players uh, with the capacity to help our national team. I will say the ones that I like to come back, uh, for example, David Fiel, which is a middle blocker who plays for Turquois uh, and also play, uh, have played for Eskra, Belchatov in, uh, in Poland. Then there is Sosa, for example, who plays in Trentino. And, you know, he was involved in the Phylon rape case incident, but uh, he, wasn't, uh, he, wasn't rele he was released from all charges uh, innocent. So he, he is one of those players in that particular case that could make a comeback. And, of course, uh, the, the ultimate piece of the cake is Luis Elian Estrada. But as, as I told you, he is more concerned right now in his pro career than national team career. So yeah, that's that's those were my my picks. If I had to choose, of course there are more than sixty or fifty players around the world. But but as you know, quantity is not always quality. So I don't think many of those players can play at national team level. Yeah, very much. That's it. Do you believe that the attitude of the Cuban public towards the players who fled changed? They became citizens of other countries. Are they perceived in some kind as traitors? 
Well, uh, not for me, of course. Uh, I am very proud of what they become in their careers. You know, uh, you remember those players battling with uh, the team of Bulgaria and Russia in the 2007. They were just a bunch of kids trying to make a good living for uh, their families and themselves. So for me, let's say Osmani Juan Torena is now Olympic medalist and five-time club world champion. Leon has the record for any Cuban player in Champions League with four goals. Uh, the, let's see, Simon Greiness is uh, beyond words. You cannot describe a player like, like, like him. I think he, Moserski, and the, uh, have defined the position of middle blocker for so many years. Of course, you have Leal, which, uh, which I think is uh, the complement of Leon and, and Juan Torena, both. So, yes, and is with these four players, I think we have the magnificent seven, the magnific magnificent fourth, uh, sorry, from Cuba Volleyball. Uh, I, I, I will say that we will have to wait uh, much and much time to see for at least uh, two or three Cuban players like that in the future. But, you know, we always have uh, new talents to show the world. So uh, I think in, in, the, in the three or five, four years, we will see another, another beast coming from Cuba. And which will be, in your opinion, these new talents after Leon and, and Leao? And what is the secret on producing that many quality players? Well, you know, uh, like Bulgaria and Russia, we came from the Soviet system. And those men were forged through iron and blood. So I, I, will, I will be always a fan because in Italy or, I don't know, USA, you play sports because you like. You, you, you want to become good and you have a passion to follow. In Cuba, Bulgaria, or Russia, uh, you don't have uh, so much opportunities. So, if you are a good athlete, you can you can support your family. You always uh, live uh, and put your line, uh, put your life on the line. Always with those uh, long, uh, long lasting training hours and uh, travels and. And I don't know, the matches, uh, You sometimes you win, you lose, but always thinking, not on you, uh, but in your family. So I think that's one of the secrets. The other one is the physical physical talent that Cuban have for, for this sport. They, they still have the same system that the Soviets uh, created, uh, which is uh, the physical uh, preparation for the game more than the technical one. Uh, the war has evolved, but I think Cuba is still the same uh, through all those years. And uh, the second question about who, what, who will be the next uh, Leon? Well, I think uh, there, there will not be next Leon because as you know, Leon is a unique piece of player. He is like the LeBron James of, 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 of volleyball. So, uh, but uh, we have uh, Marlon Jantz, which is a very good uh, prospect, only 18 years old. He will play for Lube next season. He was a uh, partner with uh, Atanasov in Chaumont, and they create a good friendship, I believe. So they both will play in the Italian league, hopefully, when this is all over. And uh, of course, Miguel Lopez, which is a player not very tall, but uh, with a uh, Capacity of jump more higher than Nishida, I believe. Uh, the problem is that Cuban doesn't play in the VNL, so not many people know those guys. But uh, I believe uh, next year we will win. We will, I hopefully, uh, think that we will win the, um, the Challenger Cup and we'll make it to the, through the VNL once and for all. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, Lopez will play for Cruzeiro. And and uh, and there are others, but uh, not like those two. Yeah. What will be your dream team of Cuban players for all times? Well, I I I've been wondering this so many times. Uh, well, 
but I will say that for middle blockers, I have Josban Hernandez, which was a uh, captain of the national team from 1995 to 2001. And then I will put Simon, of course. Uh, those two are the best middle blocker that we, we have uh, uh, through the history of, of our volleyball program. So um, both are uh, Serie A uh, champions, so that's it. For setter, I will choose Raul Diago. Raul Diago was uh, our setter from 85 to 2000. Uh, and he was uh, considered by many uh, one of the best setters of the world, only behind of Mauricio Lima and Paolo Toffoli. It's a shame that he wasn't able to win more because he will be considered at, at least the best or the second best. Uh, Kevin Gutierrez is my libero because he was the last, uh, the, the one who lasts long. Uh, I believe he was a great friend of Salparov too, uh, to the years of they play the World League. And uh, Wells opposite, well, for me, it's very easy opposite, uh, pick the opposite, sorry, is Joel de Spain, uh, because when, with only one meter 94, he was able to give so much trouble to that uh, generation of phenomena from, from, from Italy. And uh, he, he was for us uh, the Ganev of Bulgaria at that, at that time. So yes, I think uh, Joel de Spain, who also won the World Cup in 89, is my opposite pick. And of course, the oxide heaters, we we have through the story many many stars, but I think Juan Torena, Juan Fernando Leon, define very good what is uh, the outside hitter position for us. Juan Torena is a all-around player, not only attacking or blocking or serving or spiking, but uh, he also defends and receives. Is the only Cuban that I see receive so well. And Wilfredo Leon is a is a monster that can obliterate all the all the blockings or defense they they are to to stop them. So yeah, that's my that's my team. A team that if you if you look it if you look at that can can beat uh, anyone. So uh, yeah, I'm sorry for other countries, but that that's my Cuban national team of all time. You mentioned in the beginning the World Championship in 2010. Uh, what are your memories from the match against Bulgaria? Because it was a very painful match for us, I believe. And after that, from the semi-final against Serbia and the final against Brazil. Well, you know, before that uh, championship, well, I was 17 years old. Now I have 28. And the, the premise about that is that Cuba will finish uh, for, uh, in a place from one to eight. We didn't think that was possible to reach the final, but when we won versus Brazil in the first uh, group phase, uh, we say, well, it, it would be hard, but it's very possible. At that game with Bulgaria specifically, Bulgaria had a better team, let's say it. Or well, let's face it, Matej Kaczynski was the, the start of that uh, time. Vlado Nicolo was uh, playing spectacularly. And you have also Silvano Prandi, much uh, young Silvano Prandi that he, he is now, because I know some of, the, some of the fans in Bulgaria don't want him, but it is what it is. Uh, he's, a, he's a man with, uh, with a very good wisdom. So yes, uh, I think that we have luck, just that, because if you recall, Alexiev missed uh, a ball to close the second set. And sometimes uh, you can be good, you can have talent, but if you don't have luck, you can win games. Uh, it is what it is. So Cuba have the opportunity to, to keep alive in the game. We won hardly the four sets, which also was also a chess game in, in that four set. And when, our, uh, when we reached uh, five tie break, I knew it was all because we Cubans trained 
to not to play a fast uh, 3-0 game. We, we, we play always thinking in the possibility of having a five-set game. And that's why we endure and we play that, that five set, uh, that fifth set, sorry, like it were the first. And you can remember the, the easy ball that uh, Simon spiked over the Alexiev chest and that was all. Bulgaria, it, it wasn't in the field no more. So we won and we also beat the Serbians who, who beat Cuba three times in a row, first in semis uh, at the World League 2009, then bronze in 2010. Then we, uh, they beat us at uh, the other face group in that World Championship, and we say, enough. Uh, we have enough of Milkovi, we have enough of Gerbig, and this is it. We won the silver medal, and as I recall, Simon told me that uh, after that game, they were... Uh, they they make a party, you know, and the Brazilians who were more uh, experts player also invite them to drink and um, party all the night. And well, they barely sleep uh, that night. And well, you know what happened the, the the day after? It wasn't a final. It was like a training for for Brazil national team, and they they won us because they also they were the the very prepared team. And we were the most, I believe Cuba was the youngest team on that competition. There is no such thing as the youngest team reached the final. So I think that generation, which I call the miracle generation of Cuba, uh, make, uh, make history that, that day when we conquered silver. And well, that's it from Italy World Championship. Good memories. Yeah, they are very good memories for you. Uh, Another good memory, the female Cuban team in Sydney 2000 was an Olympic champion, but with the years you lost your leading role in women's volleyball. What do you believe is the reason for this significant drop in the women's direction? Well, I think women's team uh, has the things, let's say, more easier because back in the 80s and 90s, uh, there were only two or three teams good in, in women, which was uh, uh, C, 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 CCPP or Union, uh, Soviet Union, uh, Brazil and China. That's it. That was the, the old uh, scene in women volleyball and, and also Cuba. So we were pioneers in that uh, style of uh, physical play for the women, which uh, you only see in, in men volleyball. So. The girls play uh, were uh, playing pretty much like men. They training with the I believe two two fifty. Uh, they they put the net two fifty and training with men. And so I think that once that was one of the secrets that women team have. Uh, also, our coach was considered by many uh, a guru of volleyball, implementing the old system four two with two setters. And that was one of the advantage. Um, of course, you have the luck of having in your team several stars like Mireya Luis, Carvajal, Torres. Uh, that was a series of things that make our female team the best in the world of that decade. So after that, you know what happened? Soviet Union fall, fell, fell. The money for a sport, it wasn't the same. We didn't develop the young category so much uh, for for women team, I think. And the other thing is that if you only create two or uh, one or two talents per year and you lose uh, that talent in uh, uh, at the very young age, at a very young age, like Melissa Vargas, you cannot expect to have a good team in in five or four years. That that's impossible. So, uh, with that being said, I think that was uh, many uh, the reasons that our female volleyball uh, disappear right now. As for the male team, well, in the nineties we we don't didn't have only two or three teams. Uh, two or three teams, sorry, 
uh, there was uh, USA, Brazil, Italia, Netherlands, Bulgaria, Russia, and unfortunately, uh, Netherlands, Brazil, and Italia always were ahead of us. So it was very much uh, hard to win as a men team that the female perspective. So yes, pretty much uh, that what happened with uh, with the, not only volleyball, uh, just with all the sports in Cuba, from 50 gold medals in 92 Olympics to only five now, uh, we barely make 10 medals overall. And it's not only Cuba, all the Soviet countries uh, develop the same problem. So yes, it's pretty much that. Lastly, do you think that Cuba can regain its positions from the past and what is the future? Well, uh, as I said before, we have uh, young and talented players. We just need time to develop like Bulgaria and uh, maybe we lack size, not we don't have uh, tall guys like like you guys or Russia, but uh, we are not so far from from the real level of the world right now. I believe that in the next uh, World Championship, we will see a very much uh, a better team than the 2018 uh, World Championship in in Bulgaria. So I think for the next four year, our goal will be uh, reach the sixth best team in the world. We have talent to do to do so. So people retires, you know, after the Tokyo Olympics, many of the these stars will will retire. Juan Torena, Anderson, maybe Mihailov, Muserski, and the, the this will be the the beginning of a new era and like 10 years ago when we won world champions uh, world champions in silver uh, cuba have a bright future ahead of them so i think yeah that that we that will be the case also we don't have uh, money to pay an italian coach like like bulgaria but uh, we only need to play more as a team and wait. This, this actual team only have uh, four years together and they were close to qualify to Tokyo. Uh, it's a shame that Canada has uh, had more experience, but I think uh, with two or more years, we will be ready to, to rock the wall, if you prefer to say so. <laughs> yeah. Ronald, thank you very much for your participation and that you accepted the invitation to be our guest in the podcast. And I hope that this situation we are put in is going to end as quickly as possible and we are going again to enjoy volleyball like, like before. Thank you again. Thanks. Thank you to, to you, Bogdan, and thank you to my... My buddy Atanas Karashansky, or Nasco, if you prefer to, to call it, uh, always uh, putting the sharing the Verona games, which is, I think <laughs> the most yeah. beloved club in Italy for you, the Bulgarians, because of uh, uh, this is. coach. I, I I don't know the name. Uh, the the, the coach of Verona, uh, of and, and Asparuhov, <laughs> that is yeah. the young bright kid that Bulgaria have. Also, another good players, I, I think the the kid who, who is playing in the NCCA. Uh, yes, he's pa very good too. Pa pa Parapunov. Parapunov, of course. Uh, I think he will be he will be the successor of, of, of Setso when he yeah. decides to re retire from national team. So yeah, Bulgaria have uh, a very interesting group too. Uh, yeah. They just need, as I say, time and uh, solve some problems that I think you have in the, in the federation. 
as we Cubans has uh, also. So yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you very much again. And thank you. I, I would like also to thank NASCO. And uh, uh, by the way, we have also, also some very talented players in the in the 2003 when they were born in 2003. So I, I believe that they could develop. So very, yeah, I think very, size, very nice indeed. Yeah. And, and size is important too in, in at this uh, yeah. at this era. You know, if you don't have a size, uh, is pretty much it for at, at least for men volleyball. You know that women volleyball is a complete different uh, game for me. And yeah, the the only problem I see with with this is that uh, I don't see too much uh, Bulgaria playing at the World Under category so championship. So. Uh, you know, uh, this is a way to develop more players. Uh, I I don't think that all the countries give the same uh, priority to this underage uh, world championship. But I was uh, listening to uh, one of your first podcasts with Blado Gerbic, and he said that the mentality of the new generation players is not the same that. 20 years ago, of course, it's not the same. We now, you can see kids uh, uh, more attaching to their cell phones than the uh, uh, volleyball ball. It's, it's normal. So I think that with the right mindset, we can see not the same volleyball as 20 years ago, but something interesting. Like we see in your players like Atanasov or uh, Parapunov, uh, Asparuhov, Jan, and so on. So yeah, thank you very much. Thank again. you, thank you again, and see you, see you soon again, and bye.